So when should you stop stacking silver and gold? How you doing everybody? Welcome to Empire Precious Metals Stormy here. If you're new to the channel, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm a guy in a bucket talking about precious metals. So make sure you blast that subscribe button, get the bell notification clicked, that way you get updated with any new content. I've been asked the question, when is it a good time to stop stacking silver and gold? In fact, I had this conversation on the phone recently with none other than two is one. He and I were talking about gold and when is it enough and when do you stop buying the stuff? And um, I'm not of the mindset of the constantly be buying um, silver and gold until the day you die. I do think at some point you are going to need to know when to say when. Um, I think by and large, I've hit my limit in terms of stacking silver, I would say about a year and a half to two years ago. I've been saying for quite some time that I am now pri primarily stacking gold over silver. And the reason being was because silver is just so flippin' cumbersome. And I have said this many, many times on the channel and uh, ever since I did a full stack uh, video, I would say about two years ago, that kind of opened up my eyes as to just how heavy silver can be. And so ever since then, I've been stacking primarily gold. And occasionally I will buy different silver items um, just as a collectible for myself. And I'll keep those things in the deep stack until one day, eventually I'll either give the stuff to my children or I'll sell it off. But prim primarily I'm, I'm buying silver to flip it. And the profits that I make from flipping silver, I put into my gold stack. So that's been something that I've been doing for a couple of years now, and it's been helping out dramatically. I've been able to stack at a much faster rate than I typically would uh, if I were just relying on my regular nine to five teacher's salary. So when is it a good time to stop stacking silver and gold? Um, I think that everybody should have a number in mind in terms of ounces. Um, I think, you know, how much silver should you have? I mean, it really all depends on your situation and what your cost of living is and, you know, what it is that you want to do long term. I think that you should probably make sure that you're looking at the stacking of silver and gold on a long term basis, not something that you're just going to buy and flip for a quick profit. But how much should you actually have? I mean, if I'm to just throw out numbers, I think, you know, a thousand ounces of silver is a good number, a good stopping point, to be honest with you. Why a thousand? I mean, I do like round numbers, so that's probably part of it. And um, I think when you take a look at silver and you multiply it out by the spot price, you know, that kind of gives you um, a nice, I guess, gauge, if you will, as to how much, you know, your 1,000 ounces would be worth. So if you, right now, at the time of the recording of this video, gold is at, sorry, silver is at around $24, multiply that out by 1,000 and you got around $24,000 in value. Now, yes, we all know physical metal prices are very different than the spot prices. So um, you definitely need to, you know, basically consider what it is that you think is a good number for you. Um, and you want to also basically figure out, you know, what uh, you want to do with the silver that you are stacking. Now, when it comes to gold, in my opinion, you know, what's a good number? Well, to be honest with you, I'm actually coming up on my goal. Uh, the goal that I originally set out to go with was 50 ounces, 5-0. And I am really, really close to hitting that number. Um, I'm at around 46 and a half, 47 and a half ounces of gold. I have to double check my spreadsheet. But I am actually closing in on that 50 ounce uh, goal. Now, that being said, am I going to stop at 50 ounces? Well, Right now, being that the spot price is eighteen hundred bucks, um, and if gold continues to drop, I'm gonna constantly be buying. And the other thing too is I've got probably another twenty, twenty-five years in the workforce. So, realistically, do I see myself stopping at fifty ounces of gold? Probably not. In fact, uh, I could see going into uh, triple-digit figures. I could see myself stacking gold 
until I get to around 100 ounces. And then, um, you know, one of the other problems, and it's a nice problem to have, but one of the things that's really affecting this, um, you know, this almost like this need for me to, this compulsion, if you will, to constantly be buying gold. Um, number one, again, you've got the, the spot price that's dropping. Number two, I've got the YouTube channel. And so I do need to constantly be putting out new content. I don't want to constantly be showing the same coins over and over again. So I am basically diversifying the stack between, you know, collectible stuff, run of the mill, like vanilla stacking type of bullion. And then I recently have been buying a bunch of pre-33 numismatic stuff. Now I do have, you know, the pre-33 stuff that's raw and ungraded, but I do uh, plan on constantly be upgrading these now into slabbed pieces. So um, that is something that I see happening with my own stacking habits. I could see myself going, you know, hitting that 50 mark, being all excited, but then I'll see a new release or some beautiful gold coin that I just have to have, and then I'm going to buy it. And then I'm going to have some random number, like 52 ounces or 53.2 ounces. And I'm going to say to myself, I need to have a round number. I need to hit 60 ounces or whatever. So um, weird little OCD things like that are going to be affecting me. And I again, two is one. He's kind of in the same situation. He and I had this conversation and uh, he has the same kind of mental disorder where, you know, we're going to be buying some gold and there's going to be some random number in our stack that we're going to have to turn into nice round numbers. The other thing too is <laughs> my gold stack right now when it comes to Eagle's and um, buffaloes, I've got, I think, eight buffaloes and nine eagles. And so for me, that is too random. I'm going to have to do at least 10 and 10. And to be honest with you, I think once I hit 10 eagles and 10 buffaloes, I really do think that I'll be able to call it quits at that point um, because I'll see no reason for me to just keep stacking more gold buffaloes and more eagles um, at that. And the only thing I could see pushing my hand to buy more gold eagles and buffaloes is if there's just a ridiculous deal um, that somebody is offering me on some buffaloes. And then at that point, I'll just have to pull the trigger and just buy the, the buffaloes. But I think what will most likely happen once I hit 10 and 10, and that's what another three ounces, I'll be close to 50. I'll then probably just be buying one-off pieces like this. I'll buy a Krugerand, I'll buy a Kangaroo, um, and then just other limited releases. I most recently uh, picked up, this is the 2021 Czech Lion. I recently picked up a 2022, which should be arriving uh, any day now. Um, but just stuff like that. So... You know, when's it a good time to basically stop stacking silver and gold? I think, you know, when you hit a particular goal in your mind that you set out financially, um, that's what you need to figure out and then figure from there, you know, what is your exit plan and what's a good number for you? It's different for everybody. I wish I could tell you like a number that's good for everyone, but it's not an all um, you know, all size fits all type of thing. You just really have to look at your own personal situation. Long term, what is my plan with all of the gold? Uh, I'm not the type of person that's going to just hang on to this eventually and then just, you know, will it to my children. Um, most likely, this is going to be supplemental into my retirement years. I'll use this and sell off pieces of gold, um, you know, each month or every few months just to free up a little extra cash. That's my intention. Whether or not it's going to happen, we shall see. But that those are my thoughts. Um, let me know down below, what are you thinking in terms of silver and gold stopping points? What is a good stopping point for you? Let us know in the comments down below. And I would like to quickly thank these elite channel supporters. And if you haven't already become a channel member, please check out the awesome perks and join today. With that, this is Empire Precious Metals. Until next time, long live the empire.